Hello and welcome. I'm Greg Pauley, Business Relations Manager for the City of Temple Terrace, here with another episode in our Temple Terrace Business Spotlight series. These videos are not endorsements, but rather an opportunity for you to hear directly from key players in our business community, learn how they do what they do, and the role they each play in supporting business development throughout Temple Terrace. All businesses featured have been nominated by our community partners, which include the Temple Terrace Uptown Chamber of Commerce and the Temple Terrace Business Alliance. Today, we shine our spotlight on Armada Games, located at 10910 North 56th Street. Please join me now as we meet up with Mr. Michael Fortino of Armada Games. Michael, thank you for participating in our video series. Welcome and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about business. Now, Michael, not everyone's familiar with Armada Games. Can you give us a little bit of history of, of Armada Games and tell us how you came to be here today? Yeah, Armada Games is a tabletop ga uh, game store. We do card games, board games, miniatures, role-playing games, basically all kinds of games that don't require a plug or a screen. Uh, we've been here for 17 years. We've done several local conventions, um, both before and after opening, as well as a bunch of different community events. Now, when I asked you this question earlier, you had a very unique, interesting response. And I ask business owners this all the time, but I've never gotten the response that you gave me. When I ask you, what is the most popular product or service that you sell? Honestly, I expected you to name a game or talk about a, a special type of cards or maybe a dice game, but you didn't say that. No, I said memories. because. That's honestly what we sell is, yes, they come in the form of games, but it's that experience, the, the time that you spend with the people that are playing the game, because like, you're not playing, our, the games that we have, you're not playing with somebody that's halfway across the country, you're playing with somebody that is across the table. And whether that's your coworkers, your family members, your kids, your grandparents, close friends, new friends, or people that you've never met, it's all about the direct interaction and, um, that builds memories that will last for a lifetime. That sounds like a really great business model. Speaking of that, community participation is often part of business models. Now I understand that your business is also involved in maybe some little league sports in town. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and some of the other community engagements that you participate in? Yeah, for about the last three or four years, we've been sponsoring one of the teams at the River Hills Little League. Um, down by the Temple Terrace Elementary. We've also uh, recently learned about the Parent Resource Center at Temple Terrace Elementary and have done uh, several donations down there as well. Uh, honestly, for the last 10 years, when we've had games that retired or we just had an overstock, uh, we have taken games that down to the Temple Terrace Library. Mm, a large portion of their board game selection actually came from our store, uh, donated both by our, uh, our crew, which is what we call our patrons uh, or customers, and uh, from here in the store as well. Now you also support the local Temple Terrace Business Alliance by hosting network meetings, is that correct? Yes, we have. We have uh, hosted that in the past and are hoping to host more meetings in the future. For someone like me who doesn't have a, a strong background in games, I've come to learn through our conversations that there's more to games than just sitting around having fun and making it a hobby. Can you elaborate about some of the educational paths and opportunities that lie within some of these board games? So there have been, this is, there have been a bunch of studies that have been done over the last 20 plus years um, in regards to like how children learn. And when education is presented through play, the majority of kids, of course, not every kid, tends to learn and retain information better. Uh, than straight book learning, though it is still worthwhile and necessary. Occasionally, you want to get out of get out of the book um, and present things in a different manner. Sure, no, that sounds very enlightening. I had no idea that games could be uh, so involved in different aspects of our lives. Game games are for everybody from two to a hundred plus. So there there is a good benefit for you. Well, speaking of that wide range, I'm going to narrow that a little bit now because I want to talk about how games can directly impact the local business community. As you know, this video series is all about promoting business development throughout Temple Terrace. But in talking to you, I've come to learn that there's a lot to be learned by maybe coworkers within a, a group playing a game. It is amazing what you can learn about somebody else, uh, 
how they think, how they operate, how they react to stressors. Can I call your attention to three different types of games and maybe ask you to provide a little bit of background and, and provide details that folks like myself that don't play games regularly help to understand. Can you talk to us first about cooperative games? So cooperative games are where the group of players will play against the board. So you have different rule sets that are like very complicated ways uh, to try to beat the, the... In a game like Pandemic where you have seven different ways you can lose, you have to take uh, efficient action as well as work together, not just four people sitting around a table doing their own thing, but they have to work in concert. So what ends up happening is you will have people that can either take the lead and start directing other people, or people that are like, no, I think your plan is slightly off, so I'm gonna go do this thing, but it's still gonna benefit everybody. So in the long run, everybody has to work together to meet the requirements for winning the game, aka finishing a project. Uh, the next category I'd like to talk about is competitive games. Competitive games really can teach you about how people deal with adversity, because even though we are playing a game, in a game like Catan or Azul, my actions are going to directly impact yours. Whether I take that action, whether it is intentional that I'm taking that action to impact yours, there will be an effect on what you can do. So you end up with basically a bunch of different stress points. So whether it's uh, dealing with something like working on an Excel document at work and it corrupting, so you just lost two days worth of work, well, how are you gonna react to that? Um, you can learn various things like that through playing these competitive games, and they have a bunch of different mechanics that you can play, resource management, action control, like there's a bunch of different things that you can, different presentations of the competitive games that you can learn how people are going to deal with those stressors. And the last category I wanted to ask you about was abstract games and how abstract games plug into small business. So the abstract games, games like Control Code Names, um, usually have very simple rules that leave basic, the, the entirety of the play up to the player. So this is a thing where the procedure is not as important as the end result. So in a game like Control, you have a cube that you're placing other cubes around and you're trying to cover it up. Like, do you try to avoid other people's cubes? Do you go directly after them? There, there are a bunch of different ways to approach every one of the abstract games, and each person is going to approach those games differently. It is basically like solving a small puzzle um, that mo multiple people are working on, but I might be working on a different picture than you. Mm. But at the end of the day, what we were doing was working on a magic eye, so at the end of the day, all of the layers go together to create one particular image. Wow. That's a lot of information about games. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, I had no idea when I sat down with you how involved some of this really is. Yeah, we have 150 games in our library, everything from five minute, like two player games through five hour or five to eight hour slogs. Um, so there are levels of games for everybody and that's what we do is we specialize in what we call the premium nonsense time. Well, Michael, I know we're about out of time, but before we close out, is there anything else you want to share with the viewers? Uh, if you guys are intrigued or interested in anything what I've been over, I'd be happy to talk with anybody about setting up game nights for your employees or uh, whether we do it here with our library or it's just planning out something for you to do. I'd be happy to, con happy to talk to you. Just give me a call uh, at the store or an email. Thank you again, this has been awesome. I've, I've learned more today about games than I think I ever have in my entire life. Welcome, welcome, and there is a lot of information out there. This is just, we've just went over, what, 12 games? There's 150 over there and 800 on my wall, so. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you, Michael. Once again, I'm Greg Pauley, Business Relations Manager for the City of Temple Terrace. If you'd like to recommend a business to be featured in an upcoming video, please visit templeterrace.gov forward slash business spotlight. I'd like to send a special thank you out to the Temple Terrace Business Alliance for nominating today's featured business. Please remember to always shop local, dine local, and support local right here in Temple Terrace.